Hey everyone, good morning, good afternoon, and good night. For me, it's sort of thing, good morning. It's my second coffee already. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's been interesting in Iceland. I can tell you that the Blue Lagoon, my friend, the Blue Lagoon, as I always say, the Blue Lagoon soap opera, guys, this is something, you know, but let's think about one thing. If you know that something has been closed, you obviously know that it has been closed because you couldn't go there for quite a while. So normally it is in human nature. You would wonder why it is closed because it's normally open. So I don't think, and I'm saying that because whoever is going to the Blue Lagoon now knew that it was closed and you can't tell me that they don't know why. And it has opened again today. And you know, we were talking about this in my last video. I told you more of the details. Check it out. It's in the end screen. But you know, you're wondering who's going to go there, right? Who, I mean, in light of the risk of gas pollution, and this is not a, you know, hypothetical risk. It is a risk that is real. Just a week and a half ago, sort of thing, a worker that works for the Blue Lagoon, an employee, has been working in the area outside in a backhoe and had to be hospitalized due to severe respiratory problems due to toxic sulfur gas pollution coming from the eruption site. Yes, you can say we have only one crater going right now. The other craters have died down, but this crater is big and has taken over the flow from the other craters. So it's still erupting strong. And we just had like three days ago, we had like gas pollution in in the Blue Lagoon area. So it's not that it's not coming there, right? So we were wondering yesterday, why do you have to swim in that pool and risk your health, potentially your life? Why? And you know, I was wondering, okay, I don't believe that there is many people that will actually go there except the employees that sort of thing have to go there if they if they want to get paid. So if you are an employee of that place and it officially opens and you you don't come, you you have a problem, right? And people need the money. So the Icelandic newspaper television station RUV dot is has released an article today and when i open it i'm just i'm speechless guys i couldn't believe it and if you're wondering about the picture that's in the background i'll get to that shortly because that is even more raising the question marks I'll tell you about this shortly so let's do this step by step so the headline is Tourists flock to the Blue Lagoon on the first day of opening since eruption. And I read this headline and I'm like, what? You gotta be kidding me, guys. You know, it seems like people are really asking for it. So they're saying the Blue Lagoon was opened today and, and they're mentioning this in the first line. The police chief in Sodorn still believes that a threat can arise from lava flow and gas pollution in the area around Grindavik. So what he says actually on their website is Grindavik and Sword Sangi Blue Lagoon, but the area around Grindavik that is the Blue Lagoon, so technically they're counting it as part of Grindavik sort of thing in their advertising. And uh, yeah, then they show pictures of people with suitcases and packs and bags, how they're going into the Blue Lagoon. And they're saying the Blue Lagoon was opened at noon for the first time since the eruption began on March 16th this year. And they're, they're stressing that it's still not allowed to go to the eruption site to like hike there. It's very, very dangerous. And uh, the police chief of Sudorns is not happy about this at all because he says we do not have the personal to watch over this or to to take care of this and to monitor this area they do not have enough folks to do so so not much manpower for stuff like this and uh to patrol the area and i think and that's my opinion that this police chief that poor guy is starting to get frustrated about this i don't think that he's 100% in support of the Blue Lagoon opening because he wasn't on March 27th when it was evaluated. He said it's not justifiable. There was risk of lava flow and um, air pollution. And that's what he states in a today's announcement. I'll get to that later too. 
it's still the same. That risk is still there. Do I believe right now that the Blue Lagoon is at risk from lava flow? No, not right now. The lava seems to accumulate around that big crater. Um, it's flowing south. It's flowing east a little bit. So I don't think we will have a sudden lava flow coming to the Blue Lagoon where there is no escape right now. No, I don't think that. But, you know, wind can change very quickly and i don't know i know i have viewers that are sitting on a boat right and i've been sailing all my life when i was a kid because my dad loved to sail and you know how quickly wind can turn and then as the blue lagoon is not far away from the eruption site that can blow in quickly and then what you've got all these people out in the pools you gotta wade through water to get out of it and then get into the facilities and then you know depending on how long the wind lasts do they have to stay there but you know there is already risk to exposure and yes they have installed more gas meters and a weather station they did have gas meters when the employee got in trouble yes they're saying we've learned from this and we've got more now and i really really hope that this works but it's calling for trouble in my opinion and I'm just wondering, people are like, oh yeah, it's open again, let's do this, right? Um, I'm just weighing this in, the risk for being exposed to toxic, potentially deadly gas versus swimming in a pool. You can do this everywhere. And there's other sort of smaller pools and uh, like this in Iceland. What's the catch? I don't understand it. I mean, I, you know, I'd understand it if, if it was full of gold coins on the floor and people want to dive there to get the money. People do a lot for money. See the Blue Lagoon, right? They're opening whenever they can and they're waiting till the last minute to do an emergency evacuation. And uh, so I don't get it. I really don't get it. Maybe you can explain that to me, guys. So they're saying that at 12 o'clock today, the Blue Lagoon was reopened after it was closed to due to the risk of gas pollution from the volcanic eruption at the Sutnuka Crater series. Well, it wasn't only closed because of gas pollution. It was also closed because the lava was flowing there. And without the defense walls, ah, it would have been critical already in the last eruption that we have seen. And this eruption crossed the main escape road again Grindavico Vigor so it wasn't only like gas pollution right so let's be correct with this and so they're saying that in total since we had that magma intrusion on November 10th that the reservoir has been closed for three months in total so not on a stretch but then closed for a week closed for two weeks so three months total since the first evacuation began in november and i believe they had like seven emergency evacuations this time they always wait till the last minutes you know the scientists are telling them the magma chamber that is underneath the blue lagoon underneath the short sangi area where the magma is accumulating that is then sent out to the eruption areas scientists are saying now it's full it's as full as it was when we seen the last eruption but no, no evacuation. They're waiting it out till the last minute. Sirens, emergency evacuation at night. The, the hotel guests see the red skies. They can feel the heat from the lava. So strange to me. It's okay. First time it happens. Second time. But third time, that's a plan, right? That's really wanted. That's really willingly taking that risk. And, you know, they always keep saying they want to learn from this, but I don't see that they learn from this. It's more important to rake in the money for like two to three more days instead of closing early. When the scientists are saying the eruption is imminent, it can happen at any hour. No, you leave the hotel guests there overnight and then they have to run out. It's crazy to me, absolutely crazy to me, but I have to say every tourist should be aware by now what is going on and if you still go there i think this is a choice it's not an uneducated like oops what's going on never heard of that i don't believe it let's say this thing remains open for quite a while and and it, people keep forgetting and then new people from other countries that might not have followed the eruption series yes and they're at risk again and hey you wrote it in my comments yesterday some of you really tried to book your stay at the blue lagoon because you have to book it even if you just want to use the pool um it's very like scheduled um you said you tried it to to really to the last step of the booking and there was no mention 
of the little tiny problems, right? You really have to, basically you have to know a little bit to find it, um, that's my opinion. Now they have, they have changed their banner on the website. There used to be a banner on the top that said facilities are open, read more. So, and now it's on the bottom. I don't know. I still think it should like be in the middle, super visible. Volcanic eruption still going on. And magma chamber underneath us is filling up again because that's what they noticed. It's not flattened out again, it's rising again. And it has risen three centimeters basically since March 18th. So the flow of the magma that's coming from a deeper magma reservoir is not balanced anymore. It used to be balanced until a few days ago. So what's coming out from a deeper reservoir was flowing out directly into the eruption site without filling up the magma chamber anymore. So it was balanced. Now it seems the magma chamber is filling up again. So it's not balanced anymore. Less is coming out of the crater than what is filling up there. So that just on a side note. So Helga Anadotti, she's the manager of sales and operations at the Blue Lagoon and she always gives the interviews. She says there is great anticipation among staff and managers to start operations again after this three week closure. And she says, quote, we have had a good conversation with the police chief in Sodorns and reviewed the situation, patrols, measurements, our risk assessment and other things. I would like to know what the other things are. And then she says, and that made us agree that it would make sense to start opening today. I don't think it makes sense. I don't think it gives the clients and the tourists the full protection that they should have, especially since this is not a hospital where there's surgeons that are badly needed, something like this, like really needed. It's a pool, it's, it's a spa, right? This is not life essential that people need to be there and need to go there. There's so many stunningly beautiful places. And you know, I know the Blue Lagoon is a big part of Iceland's GDP. I believe something around eight to 10%. But there was just an article released today. I'll talk to, about this more in another video that they're thinking about giving municipalities a piece of what they're making with these geothermal energy and power plants to create energy electricity electricity and stuff and they're saying this this would give billions to the communities right so and i think that's the right path to go get away from only tourism use the resources that you have with this volcanic energy because i whole iceland is a gigantic volcano there's two tectonic plates separating from each other which is creating a rift and gives the magma a chance to come up so that on a side note, I think they should look for other resources to make money to even if there's a loss of income through something like the Blue Lagoon, it can be covered by something else because the power plant is still there and that's creating money. It should not be on the backs of the lives and of the health and the safety of the people that go there and especially not tourists at all because if something happens to a tourist that's a lot of negative press and you know iceland it is not it is a dangerous place sort of thing if you're not careful there's always hikers that are trying to go to these eruption sites in other areas as well and it's long hikes and it's not like a paved road or anything people are exhausted then it's getting cold then they don't have any supplies and then they need to be rescued and for some of them it's kind of critical right so and this happens all the time and uh <laughs> It's already, it's, it's, I call that stupid, but these people, okay, they take the risk, but for a spa and pe and there's elderly people on the pictures that I saw today that they released, they were mostly like gray haired people and that might have pre-existing heart conditions, respiratory conditions, stuff like that. And now I'm coming to the picture that you've seen behind me. I'm like, what the heck? I saw on the picture, like two people 
wearing a mask and that doesn't look like like a gas mask that would protect you from it's just basically like a cloth or paper mask doesn't even look like an m95 or something that would you protect you from uh, smaller particles that we you would might want to wear if there's wildfire smoke and stuff like this so tell me this guys maybe you can explain this to me so there is the risk of gas pollution and that is a real risk someone has been in the hospital already and there is like three days ago it has been in the blue lagoon so you're deciding that you need to be in that pool but then you're wearing a mask that doesn't help you at all so what's the message behind this you're like mm -hmm, you know let's let's maybe that helps this is absolutely I don't, that's why I put the question marks. I don't get it, guys. I really, really don't get it. I mean, I was thinking my first thought, may, well, do they work there? And they uh, they actually do not want to go there, but they go because they don't want to lose their jobs. And that's why they try to protect themselves as good as possible because maybe they don't have gas masks or whatever. But I don't know. It just doesn't make any sense. I don't, and, th and that's why the whole thing with this Blue Lagoon, it's just like, it doesn't make any sense. And they're calling for it. That's basically the two sentences that, that I connect when I hear Blue Lagoon. The manager says that activities and opening hours will be adjusted according to gas and wind forecast each time. And they say, we do everything to ensure that we are not gambling with the safety of our guests and staff at all times. No, you are. I am sorry, you are. Seven emergency evacuations till the last minute. And you know, the link is in the description of this video of this uh, one woman that filmed the emergency evacuation. And then Walk With Me Tim was in the hotel when there was an emergency evacuation and he woke up to sirens and red skies. It's an interesting video as well. Um, and so further on, uh, Helga says the wind forecast for the next few days looks good. And um, I've checked it. Yes, it seems like everything's blowing out to the sea. But as it is with nature, that can quickly change and boof, you have it, right? Um, so she also says... However, various measures have been taken to further ensure the safety of our guests and staff. For example, we have a dense network of gas meters in the work area and patrols. We have evacuation officers, security guards, and security guards who respond and are trained to do so. Yeah, but if you have gas meters in the area, if these gas meters tell you the gas is there, then it's there already. And the people that are outside in the Blue Lagoon are already breathing it right um and yeah evacuation officers but those you know unless they have a gas mask for everyone what what help is this yeah it's um it might help a little bit i'm not saying this doesn't help at all but would you feel comfortable no i said yesterday i'd rather sit in my bathtub with a drink in my hand or with my coffee and and watch a video about how beautiful iceland is or i go to one of the other lagoons that are there in iceland or hotels and whatever i mean the blue lagoon is the most priciest anyways as far as i know so what's the catch guys i really really wonder and uh you know and then on the other side there's this in my opinion poor guy the police chief of sodorns who is fighting against everyone right he, he got criticized from the press that he didn't let them into grindavik he got criticized from businesses and residents of grindavik that they couldn't go there and i'm sure he's getting a lot of pressure from the blue lagoon we have to open now so do something we have to open right and um they are saying, and that's what the press writes, right? Although the Blue Lagoon has opened, Olfa Ludwigsson, the police chief in Sudorn, still believes that a threat can arise from gas pollution and lava flow in Grindavik and at Swartsengi, and the, the ways to the eruptions are closed. Um, and what he says, basically, he says, of course, we're primarily just looking at our reaction. We really don't have the personal 
to manage the situation as it is at the moment to carry out more projects than the ones we are already doing on a daily basis. And he points out that every day there are representatives of the police and of the fire department in Grindavik and in Swartzengi. Um, and he, he was asked if there is enough reason for banning the access to the eruption site. And he says, well, um, it's under daily review. And we know from the eruption of Fagradalsfjall, um, the, the main work of the responders was focused on protecting hikers from gas pollution. Um, and he says the area around the current crater is especially vulnerable and it has cracks in many places and gas pollution is prevalent around the crater. So also the hikers really, do you really have to go there and put emergency personnel at risk? Gosh, there's so many good videos out there where you can look at that eruption without really risking your lives and dragging other lives after you in the case that you have to be rescued. Um, that is basically my opinion. And that's also what is stated on the website of the civil defense. There's a statement from the police chief from yesterday and uh, he says the eruption is still ongoing. The one crater is active. There are signs of land rise in Swartzengi and temporarily high levels of sulfur dioxide continue to be measured around the eruption and in settlements on the Rikianis Peninsula. Just um, a day and a half or so, it was blowing into the Keflavik airport area. And uh, also they're saying the police chief's assessment remains that a threat can be caused by lava flows and gas pollution in in Grindavik and into Swartzengi under the current conditions. There is a risk that air pollution can threaten human health in a marked danger zone. That's the that's the hazard map and all these areas are in there, but there is still a risk due to gas pollution. And then they write, it is the decision of the Blue Lagoon. It is the decision of the Blue Lagoon. I think they're covering their butts there because the Blue Lagoon is kind of saying, well, yeah, we asked them and they said it's okay. So if something happens, I said it before, I think we know where the blame's going be going to be shifted towards. So they're saying it is the decision of the Blue Lagoon to start operations again after consultation consultation with the police chief in Sodorns and there is now a dense network of gas meters in the area of the operation of the Blue Lagoon. Um, there's a weather station located and monitoring and response to potential gas pollution is now done in a completely different way than it has been done in the past in the Blue Lagoon's operational area. Um, a safety officer on behalf of the company will attend the morning meeting and the operations and management and field management meetings daily. So that's with the civil defense and the police, I guess. Um, the police chief also asked the representatives of the Blue Lagoon to present countermeasures to the Environment Agency, the Southern Health Authority, the Labor Inspectorate, and the epidemiologist. There is and there has been a strong emphasis on good cooperation with the Icelandic Metrological Office. So yeah, the Labor Inspectorate, the Labor Inspectorate started an investigation together with the police um, when this employee had to be hospitalized because of severe respiratory breathing issues in the Blue Lagoon area. So interesting. So they have to present countermeasures and that's interesting. What are the countermeasures? So visitors to the Blue Lagoon, as well as non-emergency personnel, geoscientists, journalists, and those who work in Swartzengi are not permitted to walk to the eruption from the parking lots of the Blue Lagoon or from the access road, the main access road, Grindavikovegu. So that tells you how close this eruption is to the Blue Lagoon. It's not 10 kilometers away, it's closer. Um, so even geoscientists are not allowed to go to the eruption because of that gas pollution. So they're saying that the air quality in Grindavik and into Swartzengi is closely monitored among other things. Um, high levels of sulfur dioxide has been observed in the area and this pollution is considered very unhealthy and it's likely that most people could experience respiratory symptoms. It is important to stay indoors, close the windows and turn off the air conditioning. This is especially true where work takes place outdoors. Also companies and organizations in the southwest corner of the country need to pay close attention to the development of air quality due to the possibility 
possible risk of gas pollution. The police chief asked the residents of Grindavik as well as others who have an interest in entering the marked danger zone, that's the hazard map of the Icelandic um, Metrological Office, to not stay there without reason. Situations can arise there that can be life-threatening to humans. So he says, do not stay there without reason. And going into a pool just to swim there and into a spa, that is no reason, in my opinion. That is no reason. This is just crazy, in my opinion. And then it further says, those who have business in dangerous areas are advised to regularly check the air quality in the area on the website of the environmental agency at the following address, that's loftgetty.is. Um, and they say there you also find very useful instructions. Um, and then they're saying, look at the website of the National Medical Board and, and you know, the website of the, Nor the, of the Labor and Welfare Administration. So all that, and then you're sending tourists there. This is not essential. This is crazy. I have to repeat it. And then they say it's important to keep the following in mind. Residents, employees, and visitors stay in danger zones at their own risk. So some of you were asking me, what about travel insurances? Will they pay if something happens? I think there you have your answer. Everyone must be responsible for their own actions or inactions while they're in the danger zones of that hazard map, right? So also the police chief makes it clear that Grindavik is not a place for children or children to play. There are no functioning schools and the infrastructure is in a state of disrepair. The police chief does not recommend that residents stay in the town at all. And then they go on, yeah, in Grindavik has, is a special hazard zone. It has these cracks, these deformations, these sinkholes and everything. So, um, you know, and then they're saying they are still dangerous in the area and conditions inside and outside the danger zones can change with little notice. Danger then can be hidden also outside the marked areas. And again, does this sound to you reasonable to open up the Blue Lagoon for a tourist operation? I'm raising this question mark. And you know, then they're also saying <laughs> to draw people's attention to the surrounding dangers, three warning sirens have been installed in Grindavik, and there's also one at the Blue Lagoon and another one at the power plant in Swartsengi, and they have been used with good results. Whew, yeah? <laughs> That's a nice swim to do a facial mask and to sit in that pool, and you're wondering, you know? <laughs> it's a okay, sulfur in hot springs, that might be healthy, but not sulfur in the air while you're in a hot spring. That's just my opinion, guys. It's just, um, I'm speechless again. So I'll close it here. I'll leave you to your own opinion, but I, it would be awesome if you could share it with me, guys. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting my channel, guys. And check out the videos in the end screen. And I'll see you today again with another update about what's going on in Iceland. And uh, yeah, guys, enjoy your day wherever you are. Stay away from toxic air as best as you can. That's what I would recommend. And stay safe overall. My heart goes out to you guys. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.